Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. <clears throat> In today's video, we'll be showing you how to make your own local YAM repository server um, to essentially host your packages locally and cache them. Now, there are two kind of reasons, in my opinion, that you would do this. So, um, the first one would be your internet kind of sucks, and you you know like to build servers, and you know doing a YAM update, you know. <clears throat> post to the internet and you have multiple machines and you know that essentially takes forever right so caching it locally means that you don't have to grab out to the internet or grab locally on your machine um, and download those repos and packages the other reason why you would want to utilize this is essentially if you're managing a you know application or production system and you have both the non-prod dev and and you know production system uh, system using that in your pipeline to figure out hey your package is going from you test in your you know your low environment and then go to production right um, but the problem with using a public YAM repository uh, doing you know package management is you know say for example you patch and dev you test and you know it's like a two-week process before you know you push it out to prod but by the time that you know in that two weeks lots of other packages could have got in the public YAM repository so now when you update in production you don't know whether or not it's going to work correctly because you didn't actually test the exact same packages in your dev environment before you push it to production. So having a local repository means that you can just essentially not update it, just have that snapshot for that time period so that you can update dev and then when you're ready to update production. And then next time you need to update, you update the YAM repository again, start again with your dev, production, and then rinse and repeat so that you always know that what you install in dev is what you install into production at that given time. So. Those are like kind of the two use cases. Now you could probably think of other use cases, but that's just kind of why I'm doing this video because I think the, it's kind of important to kind of know what your options are when you kind of either managing a system or kind of wanting to keep your packages in a very specific um, state. So this video is also sponsored by me, myself, and I. So if you enjoy my content, and want to sponsor me or send me some free swag, let me know. My email is in the description below. So, all right, let's get started, guys. All right, so what I'm going to do is actually, um, so I'm running Oracle Linux 8 server, um, and I'm just going to just essentially cache my YUM server locally for Oracle Linux 8 packages. You can do this for um, pretty much any Linux package repository, so it's kind of up to you. Um, but this is kind of a brief overview of how you can do it if you're using Oracle Linux 8. So what we'll do here is login 59 to our server. Um, so what we have here is just a base Linux server. Um, this, the server will pop, point to your public repositories. Um, so what we'll actually do first is install the Apple release repository. So we'll actually cache this too um, on our system um, because this one's actually a pretty huge repository. But uh, the other reason to actually inst uh, install that is so that we can install Screen. Um, Screen is a very nice package that you can use. Um, and we're gonna use this because the download for all the repos will take quite a bit, um, so you, I don't, I don't want my session to accidentally die. And if it does die in a screen session, it is better than having it just be in a normal SSH section. If you want to use Tmux too, it's kind of the same scenario. Okay, so we'll let that download, install screen. Okay, so now that we've installed screen, we'll just create a screen session for um, add repos here. Um, and what we'll do, so we'll make the directory repos ol8. Um, so in a previous video, we actually created a logical volume that's 500 gigs to host um, essentially anything in the slash repos. Um, if you're interested in how to do that, feel free to reference my um, logical volume video. Okay, so now that we've created repos ol8, what we'll do is we'll cut etsyum.repos. Um, and then there's, there'll be two things that we'll look at. The Oracle Linux OL8 repo. So you can see how there's a lot in here. Um, oh, I can't scroll on screen. Give me one second. We're going to actually do it in, in the non-screen session. Um, yum repos Oracle Linux 8. So you can see how there's a lot of repos here. Um, these aren't enabled, so not all these are enabled. But the top two will be enabled. And those are the two that we will actually download. So there's the OL8 base OS latest as well as all app stream. So those are the, you can see that these two are actually enabled by enabled equal to one, the rest are not enabled. So we won't even care about those. Um, so these are the two two that we will, um, that are important. So um, we'll note that actually. So let's open a notepad here real quick and we'll copy this, paste that there. Um, and then 
also, actually, let's just get here. We'll also reference download stuff from this repo also, um, which you can see that the Apple repo has both of these enabled. So we'll download and cache all these also. All right, so the first step that we'll do is actually create a script and we'll call it like sync.sh. Um, nothing too spectacular in regards to this. It's just a, it's just a normal script. Um, but we will use the repo sync command um, and we will only download new things. So if you don't do the hyphen new, it would essentially just re-download every, every, all the packages every single time instead of skip them. Um, we don't want that because we only just want to download anything new after. Th so, so the first time it's going to download everything and then it will just do a diff on and only download new things. So we'll just leave that because we'll actually put this in a cron to just run like every week, essentially. Um, we'll download the metadata because the metadata will be useful for um, referencing uh, the metadata of all the packages so that the clients will be able to read it. And then we will grab the repo ID. So the repo ID is just this. This is what the repo ID. Anything in the brackets is what a repo ID would be. So what we'll do here is paste the repo ID and then the directory that it will go into. So it, this one we'll put in OL8. So that's essentially what we'll do. And we'll do it for each one of these. Um, so uh, there's a few ways to do this. Um, I'm just gonna do it simply, but you can make a for loop too um, to do it so that it looks a little bit cleaner, um, but we'll just copy and paste and I just show you just the specific um, command. Actually, I should have just done a for loop. Maybe we'll do a video on how to do for loops <laughs> in Bash. Uh, but essentially what we'll do is just download each of these in here copy and delete and then grab the last one here okay so that will essentially cover everything that i need in regards to um doing the repo sync so to to actually run the repo sync command you need to make sure you have uh, yum utils installed yum utils um, I think I already do, but if I don't, it will install. Oh, I don't, so it wouldn't have worked. Um, and then we will actually go back to our screen session here. Uh, uh, add repos. And we will make the script executable by doing plus X. So now it actually turns to green, so you can see it's actually executable. And then we will kick off this script. So this will essentially go download all the repos um, and every package is in there and then put it in the following directory. So you can see the first one that's doing, there's 2,348 packages um, and it will essentially go through this on, on all of them. I think the Epo repo has over 10K. Um, so this video is definitely not going to be a finished video um, at in, in one go. In other words, this is probably gonna run all night and then I'll finish this video tomorrow, essentially. Um, but there's a few other things to do while we can wait for this to go through. Um, so um, the other thing is uh, Yum repositories, you can actually, um, they actually can be, they utilized via HTTP or HTTPS, depending if you wanna really set up HTTPS, but most Yum repositories are just like HTTP, just a web browser thing. So what we'll do uh, because of that, we'll actually install HTTPD. Um, in this case, and use that to essentially host our yum repository so that our clients can just query this yum server and make sure it actually works. Um, now, the problem here is actually I can't install it because it's actually doing the yum stuff um, in the background. Um, so we'll come back to this actually um, when when the, the yum stuff is finished. So actually, um, that's fine. So we'll have to actually wait for that to finish. Um, the other thing that we'll do while we wait also is set up a DNS. So we'll go to our GitLab, update our DNS file um, so that we can actually set it up with the clients correctly. So we'll do this, make sure we update our serial number and then yum and a and 59, so that will reference correctly. Oh, 
uh, add a um, all right. Um, so since I actually can't do much, um, but we can see here in OL8 um, that it will do uh, repos OL8 and then base OS. Um, or it would, it would do essentially the repo ID as the next directory. And you can see in here, the packages are starting to get installed. So now we got, you know, 1,785 packages installed, um, but it will essentially continue on for quite a bit. Um, screen list, uh, add repos. So this one has 10,000. So essentially I will cut out this next part and essentially whenever this finishes tomorrow, we will finish the video um, by installing a Apache and then uh, proving that you can essentially go to a browser and see the repository. So. All right, so this actually now finished. I actually reran it. So that's why it says skipped over here instead of download. So if you were to like rerun the sync script um, that we created, um, essentially it'll go go through and with, because I did a hyphen N, it'll skip any that is already downloaded. So as you can see, rerunning it right now, it will actually skip all the ones that I've already downloaded. Um, and actually now there were a few new ones that came in just today. Um, it took about like, two, three, three-ish hours for it to actually all install, but I waited another day um, because, you know, how to go to bed, guys, come on, um, real life things. So um, I am now making the video the next day, finishing up this video this next day, and you can see that there are actually new packages and it will just download those ones. So we'll give it a few seconds here for it to finish downloading these packages. Um, and then we will essentially get started with how to um, set it up so that it has a HTTP front end for any of our clients to be able to hit it and grab any new packages. Um, so hopefully in here, it's downloaded the last package in that and there we go. Okay, so now that we have all that, um, we'll exit out of the screen session and we'll do a yum y install httpd. Um, so we're just gonna use default Apache, um, nothing too fancy, just, just Apache up in here. Um, and then we will edit the HTTP conf um, httpd.conf and then http.conf um, file. Um, and the few things that we'll um, actually edit is essentially where the root directory of this will be located, um, which essentially will be our root directory where we call it slash repos. So we'll update that. And then we will also, um, I think it was this one, we'll update this repos. Um, and then we should be set. So if we were to now restart Tomcat, uh, HTTP, not Tomcat, HTTPD, um, we can now go to HTTPS or HTTP, um, and then yum.dragon.local. And this is just the base directory, but we should now be able to do all our eight and we should be able to see everything in our directories here. So we got the app stream, we got all the packages here um, and everything else that you would need um, to essentially make this uh, repository accessible for any of our clients. So um, that is how you set up a YUM server. In our next video, we'll show you how you can set up a client to actually reference this repository for it to be used to get packages. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.